Please join me in prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, as we have come here this day, we pray. We pray that you send your Holy Spirit upon us in mighty ways. The Spirit may lead us into the truth of your word. The Spirit may grant us that forgiveness that you offer in your holy sacrament. Lord, we pray the Spirit may be with us as we meditate now upon your word. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's Pentecost Sunday. You have your present spot yet? Pentecost? Eggs hidden? Isn't it, isn't it kind of nice to have a, a festival Sunday that's not commercialized? You know, because the thing grabs Christmas, right? And then suddenly you can't, you know, it's, it's the end of September and all the Christmas things are out in the store and, and you get past Christmas and suddenly all the Easter stuff's out in the stores. But you know what? So far, Hallmark must not have discovered Pentecost. I'm just saying. A day when we can actually target and focus the work of the Holy Spirit and the mighty work that the Holy Spirit did on that first day that we call Pentecost. Remember that, that day of the Spirit's coming in that mighty, mighty, powerful way. A day to recall that, that what we know as the birth of the Christian church. A day to remember the Holy Spirit. You know, I think sometimes the Holy Spirit, you know, we talk about God the Father a lot, talk about God the Son a lot. But we, you know, just don't talk about God the Spirit a lot. But yet Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, all in unity, all to be worshipped together. We talk about it in the creed, you know, the, the Spirit that proceeds from the Father and the Son who is to be worshipped and glorified, just like the Father and the Son would be worshipped and glorified. And finally, this day, Pentecost. A great day to reflect on the work of the Holy Spirit and to reflect on that first, that first day when God sent His Spirit in that mighty way as He had promised. And wasn't it nice of the Lord God to give us an example this past week of what it sounds like to have rushing mighty wind? Y'all get that? Everybody got the wind last week? Wasn't that amazing? Did it get your attention? You know, on that day, that was the point, wasn't it? A sound like a rushing wind so that the people around would hear it and they would come and they would wonder what was going on around the apostles and suddenly the tongues of fire appearing above their heads. Do you think they got attention? Sure it did. And that was the point. The Spirit was coming to do what the Spirit was supposed to do. It had been prophesied. We heard that prophecy from Joel read as a part of the reading from Acts 2. The Spirit would be poured out on all people. Uh, John the Baptist, when he was talking, when he was pointing people to Jesus, he was saying, Behold the Lamb of God. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And then comes this Pentecost event on that day. And it all comes together. The Spirit sent in that mighty way. The sound of a rushing wind. The people gather around. And Jesus had, Jesus had told his disciples that this was going to happen. We heard a part of it in our, in our reading from the gospel today. I want to look a little bit in John chapter 16, where Jesus said, I, I, did not, I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may, may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper here, the Helper, the Spirit of God, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. That's Jesus' promise to his disciples about sending the Holy Spirit to them. He would send them to them. They would bring the truth to their minds. He would send them to them to empower them to speak that truth to the people. And he would glorify Jesus. And that's just what the Spirit did. The Spirit came in that mighty way at that, and that day of Pentecost, as we call it, that, that day when He came, He came to testify about Jesus. The message that says, 
We heard the people, they, were, they heard them talking in all their own languages, which was quite a feat for a bunch of Galileans to be able to speak all those different languages. But again, the Spirit of God was placing that upon them. But what were they saying in response to that? They are saying, we hear them telling in our own words the mighty wonders of God. What are the mighty wonders of God? They're the, there's what God did for them in Jesus Christ. The Spirit's work, the Spirit's primary work is to bring people to Jesus Christ. It is to glorify Jesus. That's what Jesus said in, in John 14. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, and the Father will send it in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that I've said to you. What was Jesus saying to them about how he would, be, he would go, he would be crucified, he'd be raised again from the third day. How he was the Savior of the world. In John 15, it says, when the Spirit Helper comes, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you've been with me from the beginning. The Spirit came to fulfill that which was the primary role of the Spirit to glorify Jesus, to bring people to Jesus. And that's what Pentecost is about. It's about the Spirit coming that powerful, mighty way to reveal, reveal Jesus to this world. And the Spirit still comes to do that today. That is His role. Whenever we hear the Word of God, the Spirit is at work. Whenever we receive the sacrament, the Spirit is at work. The Spirit is at work for every little baby, every adult, every child that we baptize here in water in the Word. The Spirit is at work bringing faith into their hearts and lives. The Spirit comes to us in that Word to convict us, as it says, to convict us of sin because they don't believe in me, convicting of righteousness because I go to the Father and you'll see me no longer. The Holy Spirit still comes to do mighty things in this world. The deal is, you know, folks, it's not always accompanied with a mighty, the sound of a rushing wind, is it? It's more, more that Word of God that comes in. And the Word of God comes and it gets our attention. It's not like the wind. But it gets our attention when we look at that Word and we see our sinful state, our sinful condition. And we look and we study that, that, and see that God you know, must punish that sin and that God's wrath is horrific. And that God's wrath would condemn people to hell that do not believe. That is a horrific message. It gets our attention. You know, when we look at the word in that way, we call that the second use of the law. You know, it's the, it's the mirror use of the law. You look at it, it shows you your sin. It gets our attention, convicting us because of sin. But then he also has this beautiful message of the gospel, of the righteousness of the Father that came through Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for our sins. And the Spirit brings to us this Word of God that we can read today, inspired by the Holy Spirit. It brings to us that message of grace in our hearts and our lives, and it sets us free. It's a powerful work of the Holy Spirit. And I would, I, would, I would contend that compared to the sound of a mighty rushing wind, that this word of convicting us of sin and freeing us of the gospel is a far greater work than any sound of wind. Because without the Spirit working in our lives, we cannot call Jesus as Lord. But when the Spirit works, when the Spirit works the gospel, we can say, Jesus is Lord. It's a mighty work. I think sometimes we, we look around this world and we think, well, why wouldn't the Spirit come and do something great like it did on, on Pentecost? You know, the, the wind, the little tongues of fire. Wouldn't that be cool, you know? I bet if a little tongue of fire appeared above my head, you'd be talking about it. It's safe to do that. I don't even hear it right back here. It should be fine, just so you know. We don't need that. Because the Word of God is powerful. The Word of God changes people's lives. And when the Spirit is at work, miracles happen in people's lives. I brought along a story I read just this week. It talks about the Spirit at work in people's lives. It reads, on Monday, 33 Texas inmates traded their prison guard for graduation caps and gowns and the Holy Bible at Texas Maxim, Maximum Security uh, Darrington Unit. They were the second graduating class in the prison to receive a bachelor's degree from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary School since the program was created by the state six years ago. Dr. Benjamin Phillips, the director of, the, of Southwestern Baptist, says God has transformed some really bad people into some really amazing people. Men in prison listen best to those who have walked in their shoes, who know what their life is like and live it along the side of them, and whose lives have transformed already. 
Dr. Phillips said in order to be allowed into the program, the inmates must be serving a lengthy sentence and promise to spend six years working with other inmates at prisons across Texas. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said, they will all pay their dues to society. They will all pay their sentences, many of them serving lifelong sentences. Patrick said, this is not a get-out-of-jail-free card for the inmates. They still have to serve their full time in prison. Warren Craig Bishop II entered the Darrington Prison Unit in 1997. A graduate of the seminary program, he said, I wasn't a believer. I wasn't a Christian. I was a complete sinner. I was a murderer, a thief, a crook, everything. Coming to know Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, I've seen that he has forgiven me for all of that. It's a tough road, but it's a glorious one to go down. The Spirit of God changes lives, people. The Spirit of God can take this guy, murderer, thief, crook, everything, and bring into his life forgiveness. That is a powerful work. The Holy Spirit is still at work today. In mighty and powerful ways. The Holy Spirit is at work in your life, having called us to faith. The Holy Spirit is at your life, working in your life to keep you in faith. You know, when uh, we studied the catechism things, you know, for confirmation, um, Luther talking about the third article of the Apostles' Creed says, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel and enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith, and in the same way he calls, gathers, and enlightens the whole Christian church on earth. You know, we, we read that and we realize that is an amazing thing what the Holy Spirit has done for us. You know, we might not be murderers or thieves or crooks or these kind of things that are described there, but we're all complete sinners. And the Spirit comes and redeems us through what Jesus has done for us on the cross. The Spirit comes and pours out His grace into our hearts and our lives. The Spirit comes and He gifts us to be the people of God in this world. You know, it is the little stewardship cards we're going to do next week. The Spirit gives us those gifts to serve Him in this congregation and outside of this congregation. The Spirit comes along and intercedes for us when we do not have, know how to pray. The Spirit comes along and changes in our hearts and lives when we've been going the wrong direction and He turns us around to return and come back to our God. The Spirit of God is the one that gives us the boldness to witness of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives and to the people around us in this world. The Spirit of God continues to work in our hearts and lives to allow us to lead lives that are cultural to the counter, I mean, counter to the culture that's around us. The Spirit of God is that which empowers us to do these kinds of things. The Spirit of God still does miraculous things today because the Spirit comes now into our hearts and into our lives. The Spirit of God does those things in us, working in and through us, so that we can walk and live by the Spirit day after day. The thing is, folks, do we call upon the Spirit of God? <laughs> Do we call upon the Spirit of God to do those things in our hearts and in our lives? Do we call upon the Spirit of God to live out the power that He has for us already? To not be scared to witness of Jesus in our daily lives to the people around us. To not be cowering away when God opens a door of opportunity and you see it. Because, you know, sometimes I think, folks, we look at ourselves and we think it's up to us instead of calling on the Spirit and knowing the power of the Spirit of God to do all things and accomplish all things through God's Word. The Spirit works. But we also call upon the Spirit. These hymns we're singing today, Come, Holy Ghost, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come into our hearts and lives. Embolden us, empower us to be the people of God. I ran across this story and to share with you. There was an Italian man who decided to sell everything he had to immigrate to the United States during the turn of the 20th century. He barely had enough money to buy a ticket to a ship to the U.S. Because he didn't have much money left, he went and bought some cheese and crackers to eat during the journey to the U.S. So every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, he ate his cheese and crackers. While he was eating this, everybody else was in the ship's dining hall. He could smell the aroma of lobster and filet mignon and wine and other delicious foods. He was getting sick and tired of eating just cheese and crackers. On the sixth day of the journey, he went to the captain and said, I'll do anything you want. 
I'll do the dishes, clean the bathroom, sweep the floor, anything. Just let me have one meal in the dining room. Then the captain, looking perplexed, said to him, But sir, the meals are included with the ticket. He had it all along. He just wasn't calling on it. When Jesus met with his disciples in that upper room, it says he breathed on them the Holy Spirit. We're not called to cheese and cracker lives, folks. We're called to live lives filled with the Spirit of God. The Spirit is a part of the faith that God has granted us and given us. When He called us and made us His own people and He gave us those great commandments like to love one another, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, to go and make disciples of all the nations, He didn't just say, here's your faith, oh now, go out, good luck buddy, there you go. He gave us the power of the Spirit inside of us. It's a part of the ticket. So we call upon the Holy Spirit. And today, man, I, am I emphasizing the Holy Spirit enough today? Am I calling you to understand and hear from God's Word what Jesus said? When the Spirit of truth comes, He'll guide you in the truth. He will glorify me. He will give you the words you're to speak. That is what the Spirit says. He will bear witness about me. That is what God has given us in the Spirit. And we are to live out our lives in that manner in this world. Bold witness. Faithful service to our God. Faithfully walking and living the way he has called us to live in this world to testify of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. Shall we pray? Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you, you gave those first apostles this amazing gift of, of empowerment by the Holy Spirit to speak in different languages, to speak where people could hear. They could know this wonderful working of God. Oh, Lord, empower us. Empower us to live and walk and breathe the lives you would have us live and walk and breathe in this world, empowered by your Spirit. Lord, help us to be those bold witnesses of you. Help us to be these people of faith you have called us to be. Help us to call upon the Holy Spirit, oh, Lord, when we need that boldness to testify of you. Be with us, Lord. As we walk in this life, as we walk by the Spirit, in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Now the peace of God which keeps all understanding, which exceeds all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand and sing that offertory hymn on page 192, Create in me a clean heart, O God.